Thank you for auditing Professor Sky's record review. So I'm going to be reviewing another album by George Balasevic. And like I did last year, I'm doing this in honor of my wife. It's her birthday on December 27th. And I have this strong feeling that in order to understand her and where she comes from, I have to make an effort to understand this singer and his music. So if you haven't seen the video that I made last year, check it out up here. It's pretty good. Uh, George Balasevic is a Yugoslavian singer. Of course, Yugoslavia no longer exists. He is from the part of Yugoslavia that is now known as Serbia, and from the part of Serbia, which is always known as Vojvodina. Okay, I even made a little map to show you in case you're like me and you don't know anything about this country until you fall in love with a Serbian. So there's Italy for frame of reference, okay? So then here's all of where Yugoslavia was, here's Serbia, and here is Vojvodina. There's the town of Novi Sad where he grew up and where he still lives. Okay, so my wife grew up basically out here, but culturally and sort of emotionally and spiritually, uh, her family and herself is very much a part of this Vojvodina region. So that's one reason why she connects so much to him. But you shouldn't get fooled into thinking that he's like some regional singer. He's not. He's well loved throughout all of Serbia and even throughout all of former Yugoslavia. I think what makes him so great and what I've come to love about him is that he represents what is best in humanity. Like coming from a place that is destroyed by nationalism and by petty tribalism, there's something about him that's universal. And he's able to comment on humanity, able to comment on life with a slight distance, but with a sort of intelligent and creative positivity. A realistic positive positivity. Not like a stupid positivity, where like everything's fine, but it's much more like seeing things through and trying to help explain life in a way that helps listeners go through life better. So if we think about that, we understand, that I think what makes him so interesting to me is that he is both very regional and very much a humanist. So he's sort of for a small group of people, but also for everybody. And so I'm continuing on with the second album of his. Last year I reviewed Poob. This year I reviewed, okay, how do I pronounce this damn thing? <clears throat> Selo Vecherny the Kid. You can see my phonetic notes there. <laughs> Selo Vecherny the Kid. If you're trying to spell that in English, it looks like this. Selo Vecherny the Kid. Okay? Uh, apparently, after the last video I did, or right around the time I did that video, he had a massive stroke. I, g I guess he's okay. I didn't know this at the time. But one thing I will say is that my video was one of my most successful videos ever when I made it. The response from Serbia was excellent, was amazing. A lot of people struggling through me <laughs> trying to pronounce things like Selo Vecherny uh, and sort of interested in seeing what can an outsider bring to this music, which is a part of like their soul. And it's a hard thing to say, but people in the Balkans care more about music than we do. Like, they live and breathe music all day, every day. It feels like every person on the street, in every place I went, all over former Yugoslavia, every person knew every word to every song. Okay, that's how important the music is there. So, let's get to this. Let's get to this, this part two, Selo Vecherny, The Kid. There's two problems with my plan to do this video. You know, this is a very sweet thing, a very loving thing. She loved it last year. The first problem is that I am always with her. Now, this is not a bad thing. I enjoy being with her. We get along well. We don't really fight. Um, but like ever since COVID, it used to be we would every once in a while have five, 10 minutes away from each other where I could make this video. That is not the case now. I had to send her off to go buy me a mug at Target just so that just so she would give me some time and I had to act kind of shady. So that's one problem, like with this video, like how do I make time? The second problem is with so little time to listen, how am I going to learn to love this album? See, this is the problem. When I first hear a Belasevich song, I rarely like it. There's something about the production, maybe like jumping around between genres. There's something that's a little bit too clean in the studio musicians. It's not something that I gra gravitate towards immediately. So with Poob last year, I listened to it a couple times. I learned to like it well enough. And then after her birthday, I gave her the cassette. We listened to it all the time. I love that album. I love it as much as anything, but it takes me a while to get into it. For this album, Celo Chevalierni, the kid, got it. With this album, 
I only had a chance to listen to it three, three times, okay? Three times. Is this enough time to think about the album, to know about it? I have to read lyrics. I have to translate a lot of the lyrics sometimes, like with automatic translators, because they're not all translated. Hey, Serbians, if you speak English, would you please translate his music? Thank you. Uh, and, and also, just like there was a movie that was made based on this album, I had to track that down as well. It was a lot of work. So I'll tell you a little bit about how that went. I started this project three days, two days ago on Christmas Eve. I went for a walk. I'm like, okay, uh, I'm going out for a walk. Okay, I'll come with you. No, I don't want you to come with me. Why not? We've gone on every walk together for the past year. I need some time to think. So I went for my walk. I put in the music. It's freezing out. I'm listening. I was nervous, you know, because I was sort of hating it to begin with. The instrumentation is just not quite there. It's this weird kind of quasi-Mexican thing. I'm sitting there. I'm trying to type Cedo Cheverni into my phone to look up the lyrics. Do you know how hard it is as an American with a frozen finger and an old phone to type in the word Cedo Cheverni? It wasn't happening. I was able to listen to it once. I was like, okay. The second listen, I was like, Honey, I'm going upstairs to do grading. Great, can I be in there too? No, I need to grade alone. So I went up there and I pretended to grade. The second time, I started to like it. I started to understand the songs. I had the lyrics in front of me. The complexity started to become clear to me. The thing with him is that he's primarily about the intersection between lyrics and music, and his lyrics are so good. So now I had a chance to understand what these songs were about, to contextualize some of these offbeat sort of references that he seemed to be making. The sincerity of his voice, that's one thing that comes through even if you don't speak Serbian, like I don't speak Serbo-Croatian. The purity and goodness just in his personality and his perspective. I think it's sort of like the way we think about like Tom Hanks or Mr. Rogers in America. He has that kind of comforting, intelligent feel. And then the third listen. I have an unrelated podcast and I'm like, I have to edit my podcast. So this time I'm listening to the album in the same room as her. She's like sitting on the couch I don't know, looking at some book she got for Christmas. I don't know what. And I'm sitting there and I'm like kind of bobbing my head while trying to pretend like I'm actually just doing, <laughs> doing my podcast. And this time I just love it. Like I can't wait to hear it. I am so excited. I'm, I know when the songs are coming. I understand the scope of the album. I was able to do it. I was able to get to the love and appreciation of this album before I did this review. The problem is I kept having it stuck in my head. So I'd hit stop and then I'd walk over to her. I'd want to start singing, Don Francisco, long play. But I'm like, nope, nope, no, nothing. I've got nothing in my head. I'm not thinking about your favorite musician ever. So do you know what I did? I also got her the album on vinyl as a gift. I have to say, uh, the last, the anniversary gift that I gave her over the summer um, was the complete Azra collection on cassette. And I got ripped off. They didn't send me anything. So that sucks. I don't like being ripped off. Uh, that wasn't fun. Fortunately, this did come in. So do you want to come in and check it out? I'll show you where I hit it. So what I did was I hid it in plain sight. Here are all of our vinyl collection, you know? And what I did was I just put it backwards right in here. Ta-da! So... I tricked her and I got it on vinyl. And now we can really get into discussing this album, Celo Chivierni, The Kid. So once I got the album, I knew I was ready to do the video. Now I should say that my Serbo-Croatian has not gotten as much better as I would have liked to it last year. I have been working on it. I got a book. Svakoga dana u svakom pogledu sve više napredujem. I've memorized that, uh, but beyond that, I'm still working on it. So I did have to do a lot of work with translation. And the thing is, he's such a clever creator. He's such a clever writer. There are entire songs, which I think I just missed the entire point of, okay? Of course, we have Toby and Bo here who get to be on screen. They don't usually get to be on screen, but they are her dogs as well. I hope that she and our daughter are successfully getting the mug from Target. So when we get to this album, if we actually look, excuse me, Toby, if we actually look at the cover itself, it's a pretty good indication of what the album is going to be a lot like. You see how he's smiling? It's a very fun and goofy album. You see how it looks like an old Western poster? It's very much tied in with old Western and sort of Mexican themes. I can't quite figure out why. 
I haven't been able to figure out this entire thing. There is a movie attached, which I will talk about at the end of this video because I did manage to watch it. It didn't have subtitles, but I'll see. Um, but in general, this whole album seems to be about one of Blasevich's greatest themes, which you saw in Poob as well, which is just life on the outside. Like looking at the world, looking at the way people behave, and just sort of commenting on it. Talking about how maybe you get dragged into society, dragged into silliness, um, but ultimately you're not. Still a lot of genre hopping, going between different sounds. It's hard to sort of peg what is the Balasevich sound, which I think is on purpose. Um, and I, it, all, it all comes together when you listen to it a couple times. But the first time it can be a little bit jarring and can seem almost potentially even somewhat superficial. But it's not. Like I said, there is a movie attached to this. Uh, I don't know if they ever made it on DVD, but my Christmas gift to my wife was a uh, region-free DVD player. So hopefully we can find it. That and the movie about Naretva. Those, those are the two movies on our, on our hit list. Okay, so let's actually get into the album and talk about it. Because I've talked about it in, in general, but I think I need to get into it more in specific because each song tells a story. And that's the other aspect of Balasevich and why I think he made an entire movie to go along with this album, is every song is a story. Every song is like a little movie. Every song has either an emotion that's expressed or some kind of important series of events that tell something about humanity. What they tell you, I don't always know. So let's start with the first track, Selovicherny, The Kid. I, I don't know what this means. Selovicherny means full length or feature length, like a feature film. So it's a feature film, The Kid. So is this some kind of comment on the, the way that movies reflect a fiction and that this person who exists, he's pointing out his falseness because people don't exist the way they actually exist in the movie? I don't know. The whole thing starts off with kind of a breezy Spanish guitar and then these Western themes come in with like, like mariachi. It sounds like mariachi strings, mariachi horns. It uh, develops really nicely though uh, throughout the song, some nice xylophones, kind of a pulsing bass and sort of a bossa nova rhythm, and even some 808 claps from the drum machine come in. Uh, and then the whole time he's singing about like going from Santa Fe to San Francisco, but Serbian, Serbo-Croatian is, uh, is an inflected language. So, so it's like, uh, so he says like San, Santa Fea, San Francisca, like he has to actually change the way the city sounds to have it sound proper in Serbo-Croatian. Um, and the whole thing just seems kind of goofy, seems silly, so much charisma in his voice. And then when I read about what the song means, it appears as though it's about trying to find like the best draw in the West, you know, like looking for a showdown, looking for someone to fight with. But then you meet the person and they just want to hang out. They don't want to fight. So again, there's all, often it seems a lot of themes of pacifism or at least the stupidity of conflict. <clears throat> I would say that's it. I would say that Belasevich, from what I know of him, what little I know of him, I'm at two out of 13 albums, right? Uh, I'm at two or 13 albums, but still it seems as though the stupidity of conflict is one of his, his best themes. Um, it's fun hearing the word cataclysm in uh, Serbian, kataklizmu. Um, and so he finally finds the guy and doesn't fight, right? They end up just hanging out together. And when you watch the movie, we see a scene that's similar of people getting together and like trying to have a showdown, trying to have a duel, but ultimately deciding to be free. Is Bo snoring? Do you hear that? He stopped. Bo Bo, that was supposed to be funny. Okay, uh, the next track is called Viste Yedan Obichan Mish. Okay, I don't know. I can't wait for, to release this video so that my wife and you commenters can tell me what the song is about. Kind of a 50s sounding chord, you know. Right? But it's all about like talking about somebody as though they're a mouse and he's a cat and life is scary, and they're an ordinary flower. And just that sentence, ordinary flower, is such a beautiful sentence itself. It so goes against what we think of when we think of like, when we think of uh, like, 
like you know, flowers as being spectacular or beautiful and not being ordinary. So the term ordinary flower, uh, it's, I, but I'm just not sure what it's about. And there's this insane instrumental breakdown where these guitar solos go and just, it's a very, very intense song. The next song is called Cerny Laboud, Black Swan. Now this is more of like an 80s pop song. It's sort of like Jackson Brown mixed with a bubblegum commercial. Uh, has like a cowbell in the chorus. Uh, at some point he references uh, Pitor Ilich, <clears throat> which I guess is a reference to Tchaikovsky and Swan Lake. So it seems to be a lot about swans. Uh, this is even like police style guitar work. And the main thing I notice here about his singing, this is where his singing really comes to the fore on this album. Just such tenderness and range to the emotional places his voice can go. Now it turns out this term black swan is kind of an important one. I looked it up just for fun. Uh, and it derives from a Latin expression. Uh, the oldest, uh, the oldest, like it was known to go back to the second century and it roughly translates, I'm not gonna read Latin, sorry. My wife can read Latin. The Serbian school system is very good, by the way. Uh, but it, uh, it says, a rare bird in the lands and very much like a black swan. So the idea behind a black swan is it was a figure that was used to explain things which we don't know, but we're positive they don't exist, right? Like a black swan cannot exist. So it used to be that a black swan was like saying, when pigs fly, because pigs can't fly. But then you go to Australia and there are flying pigs because you go to Australia and there are black swans. So this meaning, this song has two different meanings or this expression has two different meanings. It originally means something which cannot possibly exist. But when we use it now, it means something which we thought didn't exist, but we have to reset our comprehension of the world. And this is very cool because this is also something, my wife is also a scientist, uh, something that she studies. She studies a lot about sort of probability and uh, human comprehension and systems of thought. And it's an, amazing, it's an amazing idea that this whole song is dedicated to a black swan, something that should not exist but does or something that you were positive did not exist, but does. Now in this example, this song, uh, it actually seems as though it's just someone who's super beautiful and who, it's like a tortured love song. And it's, it's okay, the, the, the actual song itself, uh, it seems as though he, the lyric that he says that's somewhat uh, paradoxical is, I was waiting for you, my black swan. Yasam te shikau moi serne labude. All right, so that's kind of an interesting idea because if it's a real black swan, you can't actually wait for it. So he was waiting for something that nobody can anticipate. This all leads up to the highlight of the first side of this record, which I'm gonna go play for you right now. By the way, this album is hard to find online. You can find it on YouTube, but not on any other streaming services that I found. And that is the track Blues Mutiny Vode, Muddy Water Blues. Absolute stamp of this album. It's called Mutni Water uh, Blues, Mutni Vode, uh, but it's not really a, a traditional blues song. I was afraid that when I listened to it, it was just gonna be a one, four, five standard blues song, but it's not. It's the best lyrics on the album. It is, you know, let me just play some of it for you, okay? Let's go. So you can hear the instrumentation on here, the kind of gentleness of his singing. And it's the lyrics that really pull through on this track. But in particular, the pre-chorus leading into the, blue, into the chorus is really beautiful. We're gonna get there in just one second. So let's uh, listen. Here's that pre-chorus. And here's where it really takes off. And the thing is, all of these lyrics are great. There are good translations of this song out there, which I'm going to talk about now in a second. See if we can get his whole name in there. Yeah, there we go. 
So the whole song is based on this concept of muddy water, right? And I thought, okay, it's like a joke about muddy waters, the singer, muddy waters, ha ha ha. But it's not at all that. It's about the concept that all of existence can be seen as muddy waters. My favorite lyric that I've ever heard of Blasevich is the following. Please excuse my Serbsky. Svashta se rodi u mutnoi vodi. Hey, that rhymes. Everything is born in the muddy water. Okay, all of us, all of human existence is born in the muddy water. He then has a huge extended metaphor about the different fish that live in that muddy water. The fish on top and the fish on bottom and the fish that get eaten. He posits himself as basically a fish on land sort of watching this all. What the life in the water comes down to, the greedy ones have the power. The perch is stupid, but he is big. So he's eating the little fish with pleasure. And he then even goes further to point out that at some point we all become perch. We are all a part of this muddy water system where we are eating and being eaten all at the same time. The lyrics make it so much more interesting, but the song itself just, that first listen, I go, oh, stupid blues imitation. It's not really that good. It really is that good. You really have to give it time and space and read the lyrics and learn to appreciate it. Wow, I really like that song. Excuse the wardrobe change. My wife bought me a bunch of sweaters for Christmas, so why not wear them in celebration of her birthday? Uh, the next track is a little bit more of a ballad. I'm not going to read you the title in Serbian. I just can't get it. Uh, but the whole idea behind the song and the title is that it's asking somebody to play them a song. And it's in the context of a wedding. So it's a wedding in which the singer talks about going back home and seeing that the girl he used to love and that he's still in love with is getting married. So it's all taking place at this wedding. And this is what Belasevich does so well. This kind of bittersweet, melancholic mode of where he's resigned, but he's getting wisdom from his resignation. He's getting wisdom from his pain. Like he's learning from it, he's expressing it clearly, but it's just, oh, like, like you're there with him. You're like, oh, and he has to smile and he has to sing and he has to be okay. While this person that he loves, and um, it's a part of his old life, uh, is getting married away. Some beautiful lyrical details in here. Listen to this description of a wedding. The wedding was like any other. What else to say? A parade of drunkenness and bad taste. <laughs> That's, our wedding wasn't like that, fortunately, because you know, we don't encourage that kind of, uh, we had good taste and very few drunk people. But still, it's a good description of a wedding, but the album, you know, the song isn't really about being funny. But that's an important thing about Belasovic is he always has a sense of humor, most importantly about himself. He's always able to put himself as a fool, as somebody who, who's trying to learn, but somebody who obviously didn't learn. You even see that on the album cover. This kind of self-awareness is great, especially from an artist as great as he is. Um, and I, I will say that this is not my favorite mode of Belasevich. This maybe comes across to me as too, I hate to use it, but cheesy. Um, just like the, it, the way the ballad builds and there's this crescendo with like a mandolin and it's swelling and it gets epic. And it feels to me like it's partly written so that all the people in the crowd can sing along with every single word, ah, right? And that's okay, but that's not my favorite mode of him. But still, the storytelling is so good, the singing is so good, and the lyrics are so good that even when I don't love it, I still really enjoy it. Now we flip over the album to side B, and there's a very intentional, it is a, like, it's not really a theme album because there's not one theme, but there is a sort of um, symmetry to the album, I guess I would say, because the first track is that Sedo Chivierni, The Kid, Ooh, I got it that time, in which he, he talks about, you know, this kind of Western theme, and then the beginning of the second side is also a Western song. When I describe this to you, you're going to think that I, like, I hit my head and I'm just talking. So what if I told you? There's a song sung by a Yugoslavian in English with a Mexican accent. That's what this is. Is this cultural appropriation? Is this wrong? Should we cancel Belasovic? I can't figure out because there's no relationship of power between Yugoslavia and Mexico. So he's doing a kind of stereotypical accent of a Mexican in English with a little bit uh, but not, there's not even a Serbian accent on it. I don't even know if it's him who's singing it. Very, very confusing. 
trying to make heads or tails of this. I don't know what it is, but I love this song. <laughs> this is the song that has, is totally stuck in my head at basically at all times. It's kind of a lazy sounding Western guitar and the English with a Ma Mexican accent, um, but it's nice. It, it seems like it's a continuation of the first song because the first song ends with him saying like, I just shoot long bullets. I don't really get what that means, but this is sort of about that, like about this guy who just takes things easy. Um, I can't figure out if this whole thing is a sex joke or if there is, is a sex joke in here about him being long play, because you know, long play is the term that we give for records, right? Like a long playing record, that's why we call them an LP. Like, is that what this is about? Like, why is the first track about featuring and then this track is about long play? Why are we talking about like formats of media? I don't really understand what it is. There's definitely a lot of sex talk in this song where Don Francisco like pleases all the ladies and there's a school teacher, Rosa Flores, who becomes Rosa Des Flores. <laughs> Uh, and that he satisfies all the women that he finds. Um, but again, I I'm just not quite clear like where they're really, what he's really trying to do here. But I really enjoy the song. It's very, very catchy. Right now, I feel like I could sing it, you know, Guadalajara. Uh, it's very goofy and fun. Uh, there's an interesting one line, hey amigo, you are not a children. That's what makes me think this is a European, not an American doing this because um, a European might make this mistake in English. I don't think a Mexican would ever make this mistake, say you are not a children. I, that's not a, a typical mistake that would go from a Spanish speaker. But anyways, um, I just love this song. It's so much of what I like about the fun mode. You know, like how he's able to go from like the depths of despair of like the one that I love is getting married and I have to see her go away. Oh, Don Francisco, don't play. It's, it's, it's great, the amount of, of range and playfulness he has. The next track, Medena Vremena, which means either honeymoon or honey times. I can't quite figure it out. A little bit more what I like, the kind of upbeat. Um, it seems to be about sort of like the 60s and the World Cup. It talks about Jeffrey Hurst, who played on England, who helped to beat Yugoslavia in the World Club, Cup, I guess. I, at some point, will have to do an extended study of Blasevich and the themes of nostalgia. You see, nostalgia is usually used by conservative forces, by the right wing or the extreme right wing, or conservatives who want things to be the way they used to be, right? That's how it's used in America. That's why the term make America great again exists, because it harkens back to a time which never existed. It harkens back to a time where things were simpler and better and before all these changes happened. This album, much like a movie of the similar time, Do You Remember Dolly Bell, plays exclusively on, or I mean this song, like the, like the movie Dolly Bell, plays on a certain nostalgia for post-war Yugoslavia. But it's not that same kind of, gee, remember when things were good. Because things are still kind of bad in both this song and in the movie, right? But it's more, I think, of a humanist nostalgia, looking back and commenting on the ways that we were stupid when we were younger and the ways that we're still kind of stupid in that way. It's a universal nostalgia, which doesn't really tie it to one place, but ties it to the human experience and uses nostalgia as just a setting to put those feelings, the longing, the hopes, and the fears, right? So, I don't know, it's interesting. I think this is part of the reason that he's so beloved is that he sings of these times in the past when Yugoslavia still existed and when Yugoslavia was in a stronger place and when it was more unified. But at the same time, it's all the same stupid people who live there and who would ultimately uh, tear it apart. Um, the next track is called Luño, Hey Tramp. I'm not, I'm not gonna talk about this one. I don't know, it's a song about tramp life. The instrumentation's not that good. I'm just gonna skip over this whole song. I apologize, Belasovic fans. This, for some reason, is not one that I like very much. But the next one, Nikat Kao Bane, is my favorite track on the album, even more than Blues Smutni Vodi. Right? I said it right? Uh, this one is great. I'm gonna play this song for you too. It is just, mm, I love the song. Love, love, love the song. Let's go have a listen. <laughs> So we're getting to the chorus here. 
but what you heard in the beginning is kind of like a funk bass, fairly simple instrumentation, very nice, but we're gonna to get to this really catchy, well, there's gonna be a little pre-chorus and then the chorus, and the chorus is gonna go over and over again, Kao Bane, like Bane. Bane is a diminutive of the name Branislav, much like uh, my wife's best friend, who actually is called Zemo in general. I guess people have a lot of names over there. Uh, so let's get to this chorus just so you get a sense of how it sounds. <laughs> So it takes a while to get used to it. If you're an American listener, I think, maybe the instrumentation sounds a little too clean, not cool enough, but keep listening. Now I'm gonna tell you what the song's about. So the whole song is based on the concept that he will never be one of the good kids. So the whole song takes place mostly in childhood, and that there's a kid who's always raising his hand to get in the answers while he's in the back goofing around with his friends. Again, if you watch the movie that's based on this album, you will see this kind of played out. And the mom is like, his mom, Belasevich's mom, George's mom, is like, how come you can't be like Bane, Kao Bane? He's so nice and respectful and kind and funny and sweet. And the whole song is like, I will never be like that. I will be a rambling, gambling man. And, and he writes a letter in the, middle of the, uh, in the middle of the song to his mom saying, you know, life is a lottery. Don't worry, though. I will never be like him. And this is part of another one of his themes, which we saw in Poob as well, of being sort of an outsider, a kind of rambling, gambling uh, guy who lives at the outskirts of society and doesn't quite fit in with things. And it's just a beautiful song. Let's listen to it just a little bit more, just because I want to, because when she comes back, I'm gonna have to go like another 12 hours not listening to this album. And I like it enough that that's gonna be hard. <laughs> Am I gonna get copyright hit on this? I don't know. Okay, here comes the chorus again. Okay. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is completely silly and you should just skip it. I'm going to put a timestamp in the description so you can skip hearing me sing the song myself. But I have to do it, and I have to do it in a specific way. You see, my wife and I have a joke about how I'm very bad at doing impressions. <laughs> if you've watched this channel long enough, you know my impressions are pretty bad. But if I do an impression for long enough, it always becomes an impression of the character Bane from the movie The Dark Knight Rises. You maybe remember Bane, he's the, the weirdo <clears throat> with, the, with the mask on. Oh, he talks like this. Oh, oh. And whenever, whenever I do an impersonation like Trump or Obama, it doesn't matter. It always turns out into being Bane. If I do Obama, uh, look, we can't have people who talk to them. I just can't help it. It always goes in. So with the fact that this song, and right now I know that when my wife is watching this, she's going, no, Sky, don't sing Balasevich in a Bane voice. But I'm going to do it. The song is called Nikad Kao Bane, which is short for Branislav, but Bane is spelled B-A-N-E. The song means don't be like Bane. How can I not play the song on guitar and sing it as though I were Bane? So skip it, don't watch it. This is for nobody but my wife, who won't even like it or think it's funny anyway. She might. So here it is. I'd record this a couple days ago because I just can't find time anywhere, um, but I recorded it in the basement uh, next to our son who was playing uh, video games, so the sound quality's not great. But here's me doing my, my version, Nico, uh, Nikad Kao Bane. Oh, Gospodine Wayne. Sesto, se pita la boya mati. Oh, se do moye, samo da mise snati. Sta se to sa topom piti, dal se si can piti iti. 
Cow Bain Dobro sin Ti imiran Sisti fin Cow Bain Was mit dann Is solidan Ni kodishtan Cow Bain Vred in imirav Ho shulan Uti shav Cow Bain O merin Ni usmeren Ni proverin Zas ve Vas ve Gospodine u e how could you even tell the difference between my version and his version? <laughs> Anyways, we have one more song left to go, but before we get there, let's have another cultural lesson about Yugoslavia. You see Bo here. He is modeling quite handsomely this chair. And this is a chair that we got recently. And this is the thing, you know, what's hot right now? Mid-century modern furniture, right? Like furniture that comes from Scandinavia and has good design and is sleek and cool looking. You can do that. You can spend thousands of dollars on furniture from Scandinavia. But you can get stuff just as good that was made in Yugoslavia, like this chair and its companion piece over there. I could not get Toby to sit in that one. I tried. So these chairs, you know, we got this for a couple hundred bucks as opposed to a couple thousand. And it's sort of a good, a good indication of sort of how you can think about, about Yugoslavian culture in general, that it's not worse than other cultures, it's just a little bit more hidden and it's not quite as famous. And I think maybe we see that with this song. <laughs> is, he, is he like going to smell my ear? <laughs> yeah. Hey, hi, Bo. How's it going? <sighs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> you can leave if you want, Bo. I just wanted you to model the, the chair. We call this chair the Tito chair. What do you see, Bo? She's not coming back. I sent her away. She's with the girl. Okay, so the album ends with the track Neko to od gore vide sve. Someone sees it from all up above. Now, a thing to remember is that Yugoslavia was a uh, was a an atheist state, right? It's a communist place. So spirituality doesn't always have a place, it seems, in Yugoslavian music. But this has spirituality, but just a sort of general spirituality about the nature of fate and something controlling things up above. And what I like about this song is it's just lyrics, it's just singing, it's just guitar and voice. The best part of his music is his voice and his songwriting, and this is what's shown. I'm fine with the instrumentation now, I get used to it, but this is him at his best, really. And it's a great story. And it's a story about the sort of ambiguity of people and how nothing control, like we can't really decide anything that isn't decided for us by fate. Here's an example of the lyrics. The lightning struck and killed Steva Senyak gently, like with a hand on a wide field, somewhere before the dawn or just a bit earlier. No one ever asked where he wandered at night, but they mourned and lit him candles. So this image of someone being struck by lightning, but it turns out that he just slept with his best friend's wife. And the eyes of fate sees everything. It's not even that he's punished or not punished. These things cannot be determined by us as human beings. Oh my God, are they home? I think I have to move into the basement. Okay, that wasn't them, but I'm still in the basement just to stay safe. So, you know, I'm oh, sorry. I still have the sticker on my sweater. That's how new it is. I like this one. So that's the whole album. And it's excellent all the way through. There isn't a bad song on it. There's some songs I like more. There's some songs I absolutely love, like Nico Cad Bane. Uh, but it's a great album. And then watching the movie was interesting because, you know, it was a 15-minute movie, all in Serbian with no subtitles. I didn't really know. It's mostly vignettes, you know? Like, it starts off with, like, these kids, like, fighting and, like, becoming blood brothers and, like, watching Some Like It Hot in a projectionist somehow, these little stories, and basically they're all setups for playing one of the songs. Uh, so like that song I talked about that's all about nostalgia and like being in a dance hall, honeymoon, like you get to see them dancing to that. Um, or the entire Don Francisco long play song is like played out along with the mixture of Cedo Tsovigny the Kid, like kind of a Western scene is inserted in the middle. Uh, the whole story about the wedding is played in. And then the thing I wish, and I'm going to watch this with my wife the second after she watches this for the first time, there's an intro to Muddy Water Blues in which he describes what he's saying and what he feels, but unfortunately, I don't know what he says. It does remind me, however, of how much I love that song. It does seem as though... I dropped my notes. It does seem as though uh, the song Nico Cad uh, Nico Kawabane is a little bit about sort of 
like bullying this kid. <laughs> so I feel kind of bad for this kid who just grows up to be like a bourgeois, like nice enough person. But uh, maybe that's part of the part of the, the difficulty of understanding um, that he doesn't always present himself in the most flattering light. And that's part of what makes him interesting and such a good, honest songwriter. Um, so with that, I'm going to end with one last little bit of culture. So I've talked to you about, about music from Vojvodina, and I've talked to you about Yugoslavian furniture, right? But I'm now going to enter what is my wife's favorite thing in the world, which is food. So I've put the camera on top of our second refrigerator because my wife made something that was very, very good. It was so good that I ate almost all of it. And I saved just a little bit for this video to give you this cultural lesson. Do you see these things right here? In English, we call these cracklins, like pork skin, or in this case, duck skin, papka skin, uh, that, that is like fried. It's sort of like pork rinds, I guess, in English. But they are so much better than any version that I've ever had in America. They are just so good. And apparently, this is one of the true delicacies of Vojvodina. This is what they are known for eating. Cevarci is how you say cracklins in Serbian. So, no, I did not eat them all the other day. I'm finishing them now, after singing the song Kaobane and spending a long time thinking about not just the region of Vojvodina, but of humanity itself, thanks to Balasevic. So I'm gonna finish up these shivarshi, and I'm going to text my daughter, tell her we're all set, come on home, and I can't wait till next year to review another Balasevic album, where hopefully COVID will be over. Okay, until next time, there's the camera. Napraduyam.